Today on Hughes and Kentner TV. <laughs> the Spirit Tone Generator. Guten Tag, it's Rich from Hughes and Kentner and this is the Spirit Tone Generator. Many of you will know the Black Spirit 200, the amp that we released last year, and you will have seen this beautiful red box of joy on the front, and that is the Spirit Tone Generator itself. But what is the Spirit Tone Generator and what does it do? And why does this amp sound, play and feel so good? Well, I'm going to try and answer some of that now, although I can't answer everything because some of it is still a little bit of a secret. So this little module here is made by us here in Germany. It's housed on a sealed PCB, so you can't really find out what's going on within the circuit. And just to make it a bit more fun for those of you guys who want to crack the code of it. And it's got these 20 pins here. But what do they do? Well, it's important to note for starters that the Spirit Tone Generator is not like a replacement for tubes in a tube amp. It's actually a replacement for the whole tube amp circuit. What I mean by that is that when you plug your guitar into a tube amp and you start to play, it's not just the tubes that are responsible for the tones that you make. What you do is, if you follow me now into the, the beautiful Black Spirit 200 brochure right here, is that you can see when you plug into a tube amp, um, you go into the input stage, and then the signal goes through the booster, the different tube stages, gain stages, EQs, the driver stage, the power amp, to the loudspeaker and back. But what the signal is doing at every stage of the way is reacting in a non-linear fashion. So every single gain stage, every single part of the circuit within the amp is reacting with one another. And that's what causes all the crazy chaos within tube amps, and that's what results in those amazing sounds, those dynamics, the compression and the overtones that we all know and love so much. Now, in typical non-tube amps, like digital modelers, for example, that doesn't happen. So if you dive back with me into the manual again, look at this beautiful diagram here. Uh, the typical non-tube amp workings are as follows. You, you plug your instrument in and you can see the blue arrows there point in a linear fashion. So the signal kind of passes straight through the amp to the loudspeaker and that's your lot really. So what it's not doing is it's not interacting with itself at all the different stages. And that is what has changed for the first time with the Spirit Tone Generator. That's what these 20 pins are actually doing. Now, the chief R&D engineer from Hughes & Kettner, Bernd Schneider, has been working on this concept, this spirit idea, for years and years and years. Bernd has been with us for about, what, 35 years, 40 years, since Hughes & Kettner started, and he's made tube amps and hybrid amps and modeling amps and solid state amps over the years. And what he really wanted to do was get a real natural version of a tube amp tone into one little analog module without tubes. And that's what he thinks he's done with the Spirit Tone Generator. And the Spirit Tone Generator is intended to kind of represent the best parts of all of the different amp styles. So it has the advantages of a tube amp in that it sounds and feels amazing, as good as it can get. And it has the advantages of a modeling amp, because of course you've got all the built-in effects, you can program and save presets and stuff like that. And it has the advantages of a transistor or a solid state amp because you can throw it around like I did at the NAMM show last year and it won't break. It's durable and reliable and will not go down on you. <laughs> but I hope not. Anyway, it will not break. <laughs> it's rock and roll though. <laughs> but anyway, Bert has been working on this spirit tone generator and the spirit idea for years and years now and it would be really good. <laughs> It would be really good if Bert could tell you in his own words what he thinks about it. So this is an excerpt from an interview that Bert did where he explains some of the technology. Please roll the clip. The classic transistor amp will be a ein, Schaltung, ähnlich wie in a booster, verfügbar, ähm, kombiniert mit äh, mit Filter, mit, äh, mit einem Poweramp, äh, eine klassische Endstufe und so weiter. Also was da klanglich passiert mit so einem Gerät, ist bei Weitem nicht so dynamisch wie das, was bei einem Röhrenamp passiert. Bei einem Röhrenamp ähm, werden ähm, die, ähm, gibt es Rückwirkungen, Speaker-Rückwirkungen äh, auf die Endstufe, 
Es gibt äh, äh, sehr, sehr komplexe Prozesse bei Überstörungseffekten, insbesondere der Endstufe. Äh, und ähm, man äh, kann das eigentlich mit einem Transistorverstärker nicht, nicht vergleichen. Ähm, beim Modeling Amp ähm, ist das Problem, dass man in den letzten Jahren da wesentlich weitergekommen ist. Wir hatten da auch schon, wir waren ja einmal Vorreiter. Ende 90er Jahren hatten wir da Modelle am Start, aber äh, es gibt dort Grenzen. Ähm, Nachteile dabei ist, dass die, dass die Auflösung und äh, die Dynamik und äh, der ganze interaktive Prozess nicht so gut abzubilden geht wie äh, bei einem echten Röhrenamp. Und jeder, der echte Röhrenamp kennt, der weiß das zu schätzen. Ähm, Jetzt ist es so, dass wir bei der Spirit-Technologie ähm, ein, äh, an, angefangen haben, äh, genau jeden einzelnen Prozess in de, de, der Röhrenschaltung zu, äh, nachzuvollziehen und zu, äh, nachzubilden. Nachzubilden genauso, wie es der röhren -M selbst auch macht. Auch mit einer analogen Schaltung. Und äh, wir können da nicht mehr von einem klassischen transistor amp reden. Das ist einfach ein, eine vierte, ein vierter Weg, ein vierter neuer Weg. That was Bernd Schneider, the chief designer from Hughes and Kettner, who's been with us for 35 plus years, I should say, and has designed all the amps that we've ever done. There's one more feature about the Spirit Tone Generator that I'd like to mention, and that is the sagging control that you can find on the Black Spirit 200. Now, when I talk about sag, we're talking about power amp sag. And that's what happens when you really crank a tube amp to within an inch of its life. It starts to compress the tone, and you start to get all these beautiful blooming overtones coming out of the amp. And that's what we talk about when we're thinking about those magic, iconic guitar tones, especially classic rock from the 60s, 70s, 80s, that kind of stuff. Now, it's never before been possible to recreate that in an analog way without tubes and at decent volumes. But you can do that with the Spirit Tone Generator, and that's something that Bernd Schneider has been working on for years and years and years. But in the Black Spirit 200, you've got that sagging control for the first time. It's on the front of the amp here, and you can turn the sagging control from one or from zero up to eight. So there's eight different sagging steps, if you will. The more you turn it up, the more the amp will sag. And the more you're turning it up and making the amp sag, the more it's like really pushing a tube amp. And you can really genuinely notice it, you can hear it in the tones, and you can feel it as you play. So it's a beautiful thing and something that you definitely need to check out because I can talk about it in a hundred different videos, but you're only going to feel that and experience it for yourself with all your senses if you try Black Spirit 200. So that's what I'd recommend you do immediately after watching this video. Turn off the computer, get down to your nearest Hughes and Kettner store and try one out because only then will you know what the Spirit Tone Generator can do for you. That's it for now. I hope I've explained some of the magic behind it. Like I said at the start, I can't really explain everything, but Uwe behind the camera, I think, has got a few questions that you guys have sent in through Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that. So let's just spontaneously go through those yeah. now. So uh, the first question is, so if I were to remove this, other than avoiding my warranty, what would happen? If you were to remove the Spirit Tone Generator from your amp, well, at least you know that you would void your warranty. I would recommend that you absolutely don't do that because the amp wouldn't work anymore. Simple as that, really. I mean, would you take the tubes out of your amp? Would you take the engine out of your car? No. No. You wouldn't. So don't. <laughs> Next question. Okay. Does it support time travel when it hits 88 miles per hour? Yes. <laughs> Next. Okay, is it more reliable than tubes? What I'm really wondering is, uh, with a tube amp, when a tube goes bad, you can swap it out. But uh, with how sec secretive? Secretive. Ah, but with <laughs> how secretive, this is, uh, if it goes bad, is the amp just paperweight? <laughs> That's a good question, actually. And no, of course it's not. I mean, yeah, I mean, when you have tube amps, you have to do maintenance with them. Tubes go bad, they naturally wear over a period of years, and at some point you will have to replace them. And of course, they're very unstable things. You can break them if you drop the amp, or even if you carry the amp to a gig in the car or whatever. Some tubes will last for years, and some will last for 20 minutes. It's luck of the draw, really. The Spirit Tone Generator doesn't have any such problems. It's very, very stable. I've indeed dropped an amp 
on the floor at the NAMM show and it was totally fine, so uh, my clumsiness was actually good in that respect because we found out that the amp was totally cool with it. Um, I mean, this is secret technology, sure, but if by any kind of weird chance something was to happen with the Spirit Tone Generator, we could of course just replace it for you and it would be no problem. So the amp wouldn't be a paperweight, you'd just send it in, get it sorted out and you'd have it back with you, hopefully very, very fast indeed. Um, I should also say that I look after the Hughes & Kettner Facebook pages and stuff like that and in the six or so months that the amp has been out, I have yet to hear a single person who's had a problem with this aspect of the amp. So fingers crossed that it should never break. What is it made of and how does it generate that thick tone? Well, what it's made of is exactly this. You've got a, a circuit board here, a printed circuit board and these 20 pins and it's kind of being gooped up here. You know when, um, when we talk about boutique pedals, uh, secret circuits and stuff like that, people goop them up so you can't really see what's on them exactly. That's what our, our guys here in Germany have done. They've, they've sealed it up with this plastic, acrylic or whatever it is, just so you can't see exactly what it is and to make it a bit more of a challenge for those, uh, for those guys who might be trying to work out what's going on in the Spirit Tone Generator. I'm really happy to, to hear that you're thinking that it's generating those thick tones because that's what we do it for, really. It looks like a couple of lights behind some behind some red plastic. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not a question, but true. Yeah. How does it work and why does it respond to all the tricks and shenanigans like my English tubes? Well, hopefully I've explained how it works. Um, like I said, it's this analog piece of technology here that replicates the whole tube amp circuit in one little thingy here. Um, but I'm just really happy that you think that it sounds and feels like your English tubes. I mean, that's a perfect result for us. And when we get feedback like that, then I know that Bernd Schneider did a good job. I have a Grandmaster, but this Black Spirit is really interesting. Why don't you do it in a pedal version? I would buy it instantly. A pedal version of the Black Spirit 200, eh? That sounds interesting. <laughs> <laughs> How does this technology differ from previous modeling technology? What is the difference between spirit tone generation and modeling? Interesting questions. Well, first off, Black Spirit 200 differs from modeling in that it is not modeling technology. It's an analog amplifier. The only digital stuff inside the amp is when you engage the effects. So when you turn on the delay, reverbs, and modulation effects, stuff like that. It's not a modeler. Um, modeling amplifiers make tones based on computer algorithms and DSP and stuff like that. And like I explained a little bit in the explanation, the way that the signal from the guitar passes through to the loudspeakers is different in a modeler. Did I miss part of the question or was that, yeah. was that the whole bit? Okay. Yeah. How does it compare to Kemper on Exodus? How does it compare? That's a, that's a good question. Um, I would say it's like comparing a badger to a saber-toothed tiger. <laughs> Actually, no, that's a stupid comparison. But I would say it's like, <laughs> it's like comparing a badger to a really nice 3D model of a badger. <laughs> <laughs> but the last question, does it gent? Does it gent? Well, there's a badger shit in the woods, I don't know. This would be the perfect time to get John Brown on the couch to play some it for you, so, um, so why not? Roll the clip. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you know a little bit more about the Spirit Tone Generator and the Black Spirit 200, but if you want to learn anything more about the amp, I've done a massive video explaining all the features and we've also got loads of videos where some of our artists play through the amp in the different styles. You can see those here, so enjoy those now, be sure to subscribe to our channel and we shall see you in the next video. Tschüss! Can I ask you a question?